Um, another thing, I've been praying for about five years, and I'm thinking there's someone here in this group of people that is the answer to my prayer. Every day, there's, you know, there's only a, maybe just a, a couple prayers that Jesus, Jesus himself asked the church to pray. And so I have my phone. Everyone's got a smartphone, right? My alarm goes off at uh, two minutes after 10 every day. It's just a reminder of me to pray, Luke 10, 2. It's one of the only prayers that Jesus asked us to pray. He says, the harvest is plentiful, but the workers are few. Ask the Lord of the harvest, to, therefore, to send workers into his harvest field. And I always go, start right here, Lord. I pray that every day. So some of you are going to be the answer to my prayer. Because he is looking for workers for the harvest field. You look around the world right now, it's ready for harvest. It's ready. He's, uh, but God's he's looking for harvesters, and I'm one of them. You guys can join me if you want, but I'm going for it. And so you guys are, uh, some of you are going to be the answer to my prayer. I'm going to keep praying, because that's one of the prayers that Jesus wants us to pray. Okay, I have a video that... Um, with the Hungry Generation interns, which was cool. You guys have that ready to go? Those guys were really cool. You tell the leg what you want it to do. So, say right leg. Right leg. <laughs> Grow. Grow. Come out right now. Come out right now. All the way. All the way. Oh <laughs> okay, keep going. Come, Come out right now. All the way. Just, so you just... All the way. Oh, okay. Come out right now, all the way. Right leg, come out all the way more. Do you feel anything at all? Yeah. Right leg, come out more. Oh, what's moving? Right leg. Oh, oh, oh my gosh! gosh. <laughs> right leg, oh, what's moving? What's moving? <laughs> Eugene, you're running down! My leg just popped. Right leg, that's good. What's your name and what happened? Uh, my name is Jesus and I didn't know that I have a short leg <laughs> and this man came to me uh, suggesting that I had a maybe one, me or my brother had a one leg, short leg and it was me and <laughs> I don't know how it happened but I'm here, I'm healed <laughs> by Jesus. Thank you. Amen. Amen. Thank you. And okay, now what's your name and what happened to you? Uh, my name is Eric. And I was playing, I was in middle school. I was in ninth grade, no, eighth grade. And I was playing football on American. Yeah, I'm John, and other than my friends, he pushed me all the way. Yeah. And I turned around and my, I hurt your arm. Driving the, the round. I break my. I have two brakes here, one here and one my. Oh wow! Okay. Yeah. And this this boy come here. And this <laughs> Get over there, like. Um, <laughs> so what'd you do? You just laid hands on him, right? Yeah. Just laid a hand on him and told the pain to go away in the name of Jesus. And it yeah. Just. God away. healed him. Yeah. It's awesome. Incredible. <laughs> it's incredible. All right. Thanks a lot. Okay, it's recording. You want to get it? Record it. Okay. Get out here where you can see. Okay, I want you to come over and watch. Can you see the... Yeah. Okay, I'm going to push on your legs, right? I'm not going to pull. I'm just pushing. Okay. Okay. Left leg, grow right now. Oh, oh my oh. God. Bro, did what? you see what? that? <laughs> did you see it? Yeah. Oh, what my God. What was that? That was a miracle. <laughs> That was a miracle. Remember I told, asked you if you believed in miracles? Yeah. <laughs> okay, now you can see it. I'm going to stop it. Strange, you, you come walking up to you and, and what happened to you today? So she came up to me and she noticed my ponytail <laughs> and the color of my shirt. And um, I had pain in my toes and um, she just bent down and, and touched my toes and prayed and now they feel better. <laughs> <laughs> so simple. God is so awesome. Thank you so much. So, 
that was kind of my introduction to some of you guys, and it was really fun. It was kind of cool when I first talked to the interns. Uh, the first question I asked them was that how many of you, there was, I don't know, 15 or 16 young people there. Oh, Sam wasn't that young. He's like 30, I think. Um, how many of you have actually seen a miracle through your hands, like a healing? I had one hand. Out of all of those interns, I had one hand go up. And I told, I told them that, uh, well, you will today. And so it kind of broke loose in the, in the room. And then we went out to Howard Amon, and I took them out. A few of them, and it was just bam, 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 bam. We saw a miracle after miracle healings. Because uh, that's what Jesus does. If, that's what he does. Um, okay, I want to make this a legal meeting, right? So I have scripture. But I'm going to read them really fast. See all those scriptures? But this is not just a bunch of scriptures for me. If it's the title, and I made this about probably five years ago. It's called Dave's Kingdom Declaration. I'm Dave. This is my declaration over me. Now, you guys can steal it if you want to. Because it's in the book, so it's legal for all of us. But this is my declaration for me. And I pray this over myself. I declare it over myself. So here we go. This is outside of my comfort zone right here. I like to be in Walmart rather than this, but let's see how it goes. And Jesus came up and spoke to them, saying, All authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. Go, therefore, and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you, and lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. These signs will accompany Dave, who has believed. In my name, he will cast out demons. He will speak with new tongues. He will lay hands on the sick, and they will recover. Jesus says, truly, truly, I say to you, Dave, because you believe in me, the works that I do, you will do also, and greater works than these you will do, because I go to the Father. And you, Dave, will be a witness for him to all men of what you have seen and heard. And that's all I do, what I've seen and heard. And you, Dave, will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you shall be my witnesses both in Kennewick, Richland, Pasco, even to the remotest parts of Benton and Franklin counties. So God anointed Dave with the Holy Spirit and with power, and he bent about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. And Dave went out and preached everywhere while the Lord worked with him and confirmed the words by the signs that followed. And God was performing extraordinary miracles by the hands of Dave so that handkerchiefs and aprons were even carried from his body to the sick and diseases left them and the evil spirits went out. I'm going to show you something. I hope this don't freak you out. Jesus' name. Freedom. Freedom. The blood of Jesus sets you free. The blood of Jesus sets you free. Once in a while, you'll run into one. Once in a while, you'll run into one. Just if you're doing kingdom stuff, you will run into one. That was a sign. That was a demon of a woman being set free by Jesus. Um, it kind of the hair in the back of my neck went up. Um, in the middle of that prayer, I went into emergency tongues. I was going, oh, my God, what do I do here? Because I'm not, you know, I'm not into that. I don't go after that. I just happens. It's what happened. Back to my declaration. Um, and he has committed to me the word of reconciliation, and you as well. Therefore, I am an ambassador for Christ, because as he is, so am I in this world. My message and my preaching are not in persuasive words of wisdom, but in demonstration of the spirit and of power. For the kingdom of God does not consist of words, but power. For I will not presume to speak of anything of, except what Christ has accompanied through me, resulting in the obedience of the people by word and deed, in the power of signs and wonders, in the power of the Spirit, so that from Kennewick, Richland, Pasco, and roundabout, as far as Seattle, 
I have fully preached the gospel of Christ. For our gospel did not come to you in word only, but also in power and in the Holy Spirit and with full conviction. This is the part I need right now. Now, Lord, enable your servant Dave to speak your word with great boldness, and you stretch out your hand to heal and perform miraculous signs and wonders through the name of your holy servant, Jesus. All I just read was just scripture, but I put my name in there, and I made it personal for me. And I, this is my test declaration for me. I would encourage you guys to find the truth of God's word. Put your name on it. Declare it over yourself and then go do it. Because when you will, God will show up. He will show up. Um, a little bit of history. Okay, I'm 67 years old. I got saved at 32. Thanks, my wife back there. She drugged me to church, like some of the testimony right here. I got saved because I was invited to church. Um, and God changed me. He did. He changed me, and he set me free. And then he said the same thing. I got the same words of encouragement. Hey, share the, your testimony. Invite people to come to church. And that's kind of what I did. Um, but we have, a, you know, we have a commission by God. Jesus gave us the Great Commission, and it's a mission, but he didn't just give it to the first 12. He didn't just give it to the ones right after those 12. It got passed all the way down to us, and we have the same mission as the first 12. We have the commission as well. He gave the first 12 in the early church not only the gospel, but he also gave authority of signs, wonders, miracles, healing. He gave that as well. Somewhere along the, the line in the last 2,000 years, the power and the authority got dropped. There's little, it's never stopped, but it got dropped as an effective witness as we go through life. Um, part of our life, when we live this life, we should be naturally supernatural. If you're a Christian, in your heart, if you haven't seen the supernatural working in your heart, you know something's missing. Because all you got to do is read the New Testament. It's everywhere. It's part of the gospel. It's part of our testimony. It's part of our life. So what did I do? I tried to use my logic. I would try to convince. I would art, try to argue people into faith. It didn't work. I would use biblical prophecy apologetics. I learned all that stuff, and it's all good. It's all good because that helps us be convinced of the truth of the, of the, the Bible. I used evolution versus creation. I love science. I used all that stuff. Um, I tried my, the number one thing I do, I invite people to come to church, just like I heard today, because that's how I got saved. Someone invited me to church. I heard the gospel. I was convicted. I repented, and I got saved. Or they would have a special speaker or the uh, evangelist. The great evangelist like in my time was Mario Morello was a uh, four-square denomination. He would come and all these miracles and signs and wonders and great. And then all the people would get saved. and Oh, man, look at that. The man of God. Isn't that awesome what God can do? Or you invite someone to church and the week they, they came, the pastor would be speaking on tithing the whole time. And you go, no, no, come back next week. Come back next week. Because <laughs> <laughs> that's invariably what would happen. And so I'm going to show you uh, my, uh, I'm going to write down all the stuff from my first 25 years of, Christ of my Christian walk. There's all the people that I personally led to Christ or got healed through me, or got delivered in my first 25 years of my, this faith walk. See that? There's nothing written there. Now, I trust that there were some seeds planted because God is merciful, <laughs> and he, he is merciful to us. But that's, you know, that's what happened. There was 25 years, and it's a big zero. I was kind of unfruitful because we need, you know, he, uh, we're called fishers of men, right? When you're a disciple, you're a fisherman. 
One thing we don't have, many people don't have in the church, is you've got no bait. You've got an empty hook with no bait on it. Guess what the bait is? Healing, power, prophetic insight. My topic was I was supposed to speak on power evangelism. Basically, it's just loving people like Jesus loved them. That's all it is. I mean, it can be evangelistic. It's just loving people where they're at like Jesus did it. That's all it is. But to be an effective fisherman, you have to have the bait on your hook. Once in a while, you might have a bare hook, and you might snag a fish by accident. Maybe if I caught one, that's how it was. I just accidentally snagged one. But he gives us that part of the gospel to be effective witness is part of living this life and being effective. Um, it's a tool we have to have. Find out who you are in Christ and what he has given us as a believer and then start walking in it. Um, here's man's plan for an outreach. The church is the mousetrap. Put some really good cheese in there and the mice will come. Um, here's Jesus' plan for outreach. Go out into the world and show them the kingdom. That's Jesus' plan. Now, God's spirit is here, and you come in here, and people will feel and pre the presence of God, and they will get saved. But I can tell you what happens when you go out. God is there in more power than you can imagine as you go out and, and just do what he says. Um, I thank God for the great men of God, like T.G. Joshua and all the stuff they're doing. But there's a billion soul harvest coming, and it's not going to be that one guy. It's going to be a million of little guys like me and you. That is how we're going to change the world. Just like in the book of Acts, they were scattered, and they went everywhere preaching the word. Um, you know, in the Old West, you know, in the, in the farming communities, they had... Uh, they call it a dinner bell. They had a kind of a triangular looking thing, and they go like this, go clang, 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 clang. It's the dinner bell to call people come to eat lunch or come eat. Well, in the kingdom of God, healing is the dinner bell that call men to the table of salvation. That is the dinner bell that calls men to the, di to the table of salvation. It is the bait on the hook. And it's the way God loves people. Look at the life of Jesus everywhere he went. Um, so I'm going to show you some testimonies. How many books, uh, chapters in the book of Acts? Anybody know? 28? Uh, no, there's more than that. There is 28. But here's chapter 29. Amen. And here's chapter 30. Okay, chapter 29. All I have in here is not just people. This, you know, a lot of people journal. These are not your normal journal, like, you know, God didn't give you some insight. I, I like journaling. These are my miracle journals. These are healings or encounters, supernatural encounters that I have since I started putting bait on my hook. So I'm going to show you some stuff. Assistant. Okay. Put your hand on there, right? Okay. This is I started this in 2011. Okay, now this, I started walking this. I started, you know, someone have heard of treasure hunting. I started treasure hunting, they call it. And I call that just kind of uh, training wheels to get you started. 
I started at the beginning of 2000, or in 2008. I saw my first miracle in Walmart in December the 6th, 2009. A Navy SEAL was blown up in Iraq. His knee was destroyed. He had shrapnel on his back. His feet was messed up. His lower teeth were blown out. And God healed him right in front of my eyes. And that was my first miracle. And it, like, a switch was turned on. And this, a couple of months, or a month later, there was a lady who got out of a wheelchair with MS in Target. And it's been going like that ever since, and it's getting stronger. So my first miracle started when I was 60. So I want to encourage you young people, why wait? Why wait? Chapter 29. Here's chapter 30. These are just from this year. Okay, last year I saw probably 250 people healed. This is just this where I have five this week. This, this credit is really cool. Okay. This is just normal Christian living. Okay, you can be an outreach, but everywhere you go is an outreach. A lot of these are like in Walmart. Okay, who shops? Anyone shop here? There's your mission field. She shops. <laughs> There's your mission field. It's just living life normally and just being aware of who lives inside of you and releasing him. Um, I want to share just a couple of these stories to remind me of my time here. I've got a few things yet to do. Um, hold on. Because this is about evangelism. Here's one right here, this young lady, Ashley. She was healed and then saved. And then I, had, I threw her in the bus, and she prayed for her grandmother, and her grandmother got, got healed. This lady, last year, 66 years old. Okay, now the, these testimonies, if you hear a specific uh, thing that someone was healed from, if that's you, remember that, okay? Revelation 19.10, the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. He wants to do it again. Okay, this lady right here, she's 66. She got polio when she was five. She'd been in pain for 61 years. 11 years of fibromyalgia pain. She had a weakened leg because of the polio. Within a matter of five minutes, her leg was healed. All of her pain was gone. And she was not a Christian. I said, do you want to know this Jesus that just healed you? She says, yes. She got saved. Because the goodness of God leads us to repentance. You don't have to talk somebody into it. You don't have to debate them. You don't have to sit there and scheme, how am I going to get the gospel into them? When they have an encounter with the gospel, they want to know how you did it. And you say, that's Jesus. Do you want to know him? He loves you. That's why Jesus loves you. I love you, and all I'm doing is loving on people. And God looks like something. God is love. And we love people like Jesus loved people. They will just come to you. You don't have to work at it. You just be who we are. Just be who we are. But you have a, there's a process. I mean, there's a, there's a fear thing that we have to press through. I'll skip for the sake of time. I'll go past that one. It was really good. Um, okay. Okay, well, there's another video I'd like to share here that we have. And this was at my friend Alex's house. I was asked to come and pray for one of his extended family members from Spokane. 
And she drove down and came to his house. And she's suffering from emphysema and COPD, asthma. She'd been in oxygen 24-7 for 10 years. 10 years. She came down to say goodbye to her family because she didn't have much time left. She, was, she couldn't breathe like an elephant was standing on her chest. And she also had had back surgery, and she had been in pain for 22 years because of her lower back injury, surgery. So they invited me to come pray for her. And so I went over there, and guess who I had prayed for her leg? Philip, age 11, 11 years old, kid. Now, if a little kid can do this stuff, don't you think we can do it? So we're gonna, I got a video, and we're going to watch that. But after the part that's not in the video, you'll see this couple, Roxy and Rob. Rob was a preacher's kid. He walked away from God 30 years before. He watched his wife got healed and right in front of his eyes, and he came back to Christ. That is the power of the gospel. That's the bait on our hook. I didn't have to talk him into it or anything. He just said, I'm so sorry, God. And he came back to his, to his Lord. It was awesome. So let's show that, that video. Oh, one, one thing. Just real quick. Okay. Put your hand on there, right? Okay. This is her left leg is short, right? Mm -hmm. Say left leg grow. Left leg grow in the name of Jesus Christ. Okay, faster. Faster. More, Jesus. More. You got it. Faster. In the name of the Heavenly Father, our Lord and Savior, mm. you shall grow. Faster, faster. Faster, faster, faster. Come out, leg. Come out, leg. Come out. In the name of Jesus. And back be healed. Back be healed. In the name of the Father. Yes. The Son and the Holy Spirit. Yes. More. Be healed. More. And you tell More. us if you feel anything going on, okay? More. There you go. More. More, Jesus. More. <laughs> More. Oh, wow. More. More, Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Faster. More and more. Thank you. Thank you, Father. All Thank the you, way. Lord. All the way. All the way. Let me come out in the name of Jesus Christ. Come on. <laughs> Let play grow in, in the name of the Father, the Holy Spirit, and the Son. <laughs> Come on. Go <laughs> on, leg. Let leg grow. Come out now. Come on, leg. Let's go. Even up in the name of the Father, the Holy Spirit, and the Son. <sighs> Oh, wow. We're getting there. 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 More. More, Father. Thank you, Father. The Holy Spirit and the Father's Son. You are so good. Father. More, Jesus. More. More, Father. Left leg, I command you to grow out in the name of Jesus Christ. Okay, let's check it. Oh, oh my wow. lord. Wow. <laughs> that was an inch and a quarter You're short. Even. And that was even. a lot. Huh? Oh, yeah. I'm good. Yeah, okay, you can see any difference? Yes. Oh, yeah. That was uh, July the 3rd. She's not, she, I told her, take three deep breaths. We, after we, God healed her, her back, we, wait, we all prayed for her. Just a short, like a minute. I said, take three deep breaths. She went, I feel different. Or something's different, something's different. She took off her oxygen. She hasn't had it on since. She's totally healed. That's... Normal Christianity, and there was a, 
her husband, who had walked away from Christ, came back to him. We didn't have to invite him to church. So one last testimony, Alex, when she coming up. This is my friend Alex. He, uh, I met him in a Walmart. He's got issues. He's still, we're, you know, uh, he's still in the process as far as health issues and stuff. Um, I met him in Walmart. I led him to the Lord in Starbucks. And he, he's prayed for, I don't know, he probably had 30, 30 plus people healed. But I wanted to share, we went to uh, Seattle last month. And we took and uh, went to a mall, and we did an outreach with a church over there. And I want to share one family in the mall. Debate real quick. How's it going, everybody? It is so awesome to be here with you guys today. I'm very grateful and so thankful. The spirit is here, and I just love it. So I just wanted to say that. Um, my name's Alex, and he... Uh, he brought Jesus into my life and it just completely changed my life. I thought all that stuff was phony. I had an emptiness inside that I had been yearning to fill my whole life with alcohol or drugs or whatever. But none of that mattered. None of that filled what I needed inside. And when, when I got introduced to Christ, everything changed. Everything changed. We were doing this outreach in Seattle at the mall. We were shopping, okay? So you don't make it so obvious what we're doing and get kicked out. So, because people will kick you out. It's happened. Um, we had a prophetic word earlier in the day that somebody was going to get healed with some knee pain. And I just happened to catch this couple off the corner of my eye her, uh, her husband had a knee brace on his left knee, or his, his left knee, excuse me. And I said, watch this, check this out. And I handed my treasure map over and I said, excuse me, can I talk to you for a second? And he was like, yeah, 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 what's going on? And I said, I noticed you got a knee brace on. I was wondering if I could take care of that for you. And he's like, well, what do you mean? What are you talking about? And I said, well, we, we've been having bad luck, my group, that whole morning. It was like breaking rocks. Couldn't get nobody to pray for, nobody. Finally, I just said, I'll tell you how we do it afterwards. And he was like, okay, go ahead. And so me and my buddy, we just started pointing and pointing and pointing. And then finally, his eyes get this big. He's like, oh my God, there's, there's, there's like ants crawling on my body right now. What's going on? What's all this tingling? What's going on? Oh, yeah. You want to know who that is? You want to know what that is? I said, that's Jesus right there. And he's going, it, it, it's just more and more. It's not stopping. It's just continuously happening in his body as I'm talking to him right there. And so we're in the mall. I got him and his wife and, and their five kids. And we're all talking. And, and I said, you know this, man. This is your dad. This is your husband. He's not telling a lie. What's going on with his body right now? I don't know. I said, this is Jesus. This is his love. He wants to show all of you he loves you so much. And he just healed your father's knee, and we didn't touch him. It had nothing to do with us. It has everything to do with the Lord that we serve. And so once they saw that, the son was like, well, I have pain in my back. And so we had him sit down up against the wall, right in the mall. And I grew his leg out in Jesus' name. All of his back pain left right there. But that wasn't the best part. The best part was they all wanted to know this Jesus. The entire family. And so we got to lead them to the Lord. I heard earlier today, you can't outgive God. Ain't that the truth? I love Jesus so much. He just, he, he doesn't want to stay in these walls, even though he loves being in here. He wants to get outside the walls. He wants to flow out of us like a living water. You know what I'm saying? He wants out. He doesn't want to be kept inside. He wants out. And so all you got to do is take a chance. Just take a step out in faith and watch what God does in your lives.
All right. Thank you. So sometimes we walk by safe instead of walking by faith. Sometimes, but God is, the, I call, they call it the chicken line. God is on the other side of the chicken line. So we had, uh, there's some testimonies okay, that we just called out in those stories. I heard like knee, back, uh, fibromyalgia pain, different things like that. Um, also, I wrote, I wrote some stuff down. Somebody in like a fall, you've fallen and hurt something. Um, short leg was one, and a lump, something like a lump or a tumor, something along that line. Uh, so anyway, there was like knee, there was back pain, fibromyalgia pain. Um, I would like, I don't know, I'll give it over back to you, Pastor, but as far as I would like to pray for you, and I'm, Alex, I'm sure we'd like to pray for you. We see so many miracles. Uh, God even heals in church, believe it or not. It's, it's easier out there, but he does do it here because we're his kids, and he loves people. 